Are you aware that Shaitan's ultimate goal, considered most pleasing to him, is creating misunderstandings between couples? That's his top priority. Your marriage. He is determined to turn it into a battlefield. He's your number one enemy. So, I would like to ask the one who's planning to get married, the newlywed couple in the dreamy season of young love, and the couple that's been married for years. What measures have you taken to shield your union from the enemy? Is God at the center of your love triangle? Did you hook up with God first before hooking up with your partner? And most importantly, are you marrying or did you marry for the sake of Allah? You have a greater chance of having a happy long-lasting relationship if you married the one who's grounded in their practice of din than if you married for love, beauty or wealth. This can hardly sustain a marriage. So get your priorities in the right order. Just imagine having a partner who can't maintain a relationship with his Lord, doesn't fulfill his obligations to him, yet he, Allah, brought them to life, granted them provisions, and blessed them in countless ways. How do you really expect such a person to maintain a relationship with you? Who are you in comparison? Constantly seeking, remembering, and relying on Allah is the only way you can reach your turn. You cannot let your guard down. Obeying loving and fearing God is the only way you will love your partner in the way they deserve because you would fear treating them in a way that displeases Allah. This is Yasa, repeatedly abusing his wife emotionally, verbally and physically, lashing out at her in moments of anger for anything and everything that doesn't suit his fancy. This is happening to many sisters out there, being mistreated at the hands of those meant to love, care and protect them. Yet Allah himself ordered you to live with your wives honorably. The Prophet wasallam told you, the best among you is he who is best to his wife. Now take a look at Sister Sharifa here. An example of many ladies out there who are unbelievably disrespectful, difficult, quarrelsome and flat out rude towards their husbands. Some sisters even beat up their men. But have you forgotten that the best woman is the one who makes her husband happy by looking at her? And if you died while your husband is pleased with you, Allah would grant you Jannah. Why then don't you fear Allah in regards to how you treat one another? Your marriage is made up of rights and responsibilities towards each other that should never be violated. Where in the Quran does Allah tell you to oppress and abuse your spouse? Allah is watching. Marriage is half of your din. This is no light statement. It requires a weighty amount of hard work and faith to make our marriages the vision of tranquility that Allah intends for us. So on that note, I'll leave you be with this piece of advice. One, include God in your love triangle because the closer you both move towards Him, the closer you both move towards one another. Two, you cannot direct your relationship onto a spiritual level when you personally haven't reached it yet. So strengthen your faith in personal relationship with your Lord, then push your relationship toward the same. Love God first, then your partner. Let God work in you first, then your relationship. Three, do not be fooled by the one who recites the Quran. His recitation is nothing but speech. Look to those who act according to it. Is your partner loyal, humble, honest, faithful, fair, patient are they kind these are some of the characters expected to be seen on a religious person islam does not separate religion from morality a good muslim by definition must be a good person one cannot be a good muslim and a bad person at the same time because worship and character are two sides of the same coin the prophet wasallam, told us the most complete of believers in faith are those with the best character now, putting God at the center of your relationship won't make you or your relationship perfect and it will not guarantee a smooth journey for you or as a couple. However, it will teach you how to treat imperfections with grace, make you more tolerant, patient and stronger together in times of trials. Assalamu alaikum.